The White House has faced harsh criticism for deporting thousands of Haitian migrants back to Haiti, a country in extreme turmoil. In recent months, Haiti's endured the assassination of its president and a devastating earthquake. Poverty is widespread. Food is hard to find. NBC's Jacob Soboroff went to Haiti to witness the dire situation on the ground that's driving Haitians to seek refuge in the United States. Across Haiti's capital city, a landscape of despair, one that extends far beyond Port-au-Prince. We're on our way to Lakai, the area that was devastated by the recent earthquake here. We're going to board a plane operated by the World Food Program. They're doing food and cash distributions. This is it. We flew with Pierre Honorat, the organization's country director in Haiti. When we arrived, we drove towards a remote commune called Akin, an area that faced extreme poverty even before the quake due to a lack of jobs in the area. Here you have the most vulnerable among very vulnerable people. And you need to properly identify who they are. They might be starving, literally. Exactly. This is one of their food distribution sites. Pierre's leading us into it right now. We met several women waiting in line, including the single mom of four kids. Can you tell me what life is like here? This is not a great place. Do you know anybody who's left, anybody who's leaving Haiti? Yes, there are a lot of people leaving. Hunger isn't the only life-threatening reality for Haitians. Some areas are really like war zone. You don't go there anymore. It's a so war zone. It's really a war zone. We flew back to Port-au-Prince on a UN chopper, now used to avoid violence in addition to delivering aid. On the city's streets, you understand why. We're making our way through Port-au-Prince, and much of the city right now is controlled by violent gangs. We're heading to a clinic run by Doctors Without Borders. They say they're seeing an uptick in violence. Could you trauma? It's trauma hospital. Yep. Trauma Half of the yep. patients yep. who arrive here have life-threatening gunshot wounds, often from high-power firearms. The patient that's in this bed inside this room right now is a victim of gun violence. Haitian trauma surgeon Xavier Garnizan tends to the neediest patients. How many of the people that you meet as patients do you think would consider leaving Haiti for another country, including the United States? Maybe 90 percent. 90 percent? Why so high? Violence, poverty. And those are the patients you treat every day? Yeah. Victims of gun violence? Yeah. Stabbings? What? Car accidents because Car they have to move from one place to another due to violence in their community? Mm -hmm. And even you as a doctor, is it fair to say that you might think about one day leaving Haiti because of the situation here? Yes, I do, uh, because at the end, I got dreams too. I, I want a better life too. I don't need to be rich, I don't need that. But I need to, to have enough to feed my family. There's enormous pressure for you as well. Yeah. Shep, as Dr. Kernizan continues that absolutely heroic work, the U.S. says the number of Haitians that our Coast Guard has stopped trying to leave by boat has tripled over just the last year, hundreds in the last weeks alone. It's a situation the Biden administration says they are committed to addressing through what they call Haitian-led solutions. Shep? Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.